The Harvest Show, where faith makes a world of difference. And hi, welcome to the Friday edition of Harvest. One of these days, they'll actually tell me the right camera to go to. How does a person <laughs> bounce back after being beaten down emotionally? The former co-host of the 700 Club, Christy Watts, shares what it means to talk yourself happy. And it's believed to be the burial place of Jesus Christ. Brian joins us from the Church of the Holy Sepulchre with the significance of the sacred site. And he's using his star power to shed light on the problem of domestic violence. Singer Danny Gokey performs Rise in a powerful new video. But first, of course, we have to get to a Friday staple here on The Harvest Show. A little something something we like to call choose your news. Ms. Lowe, you're the only one who gets to choose, choose today. today. Well, maybe we'll let Dean, although after those camera directions, <laughs> I'm not so sure. But anyway, it's an all-American version of Choose Your News today, and we have stories from Los Angeles, Richmond, Virginia, and Washington, D.C. Okay, let's go to the nation's capital. I was afraid you were going to say that. <laughs> Donald Trump will give his first commencement address as president at Liberty University, the evangelical college led by his prominent supporter, Jerry Falwell, Jr. The White House Press Secretary, Sean Spicer, confirmed to the Washington Post that Trump would give the address at Liberty after CBN first reported, based on an exclusive presidential interview, that Trump would be the commencement speaker. Falwell, the son of the prominent televangelist, was one of Trump's most vocal supporters among evangelical Protestant leaders during the 2016 campaign. So this is probably one of his first His first indeed, yeah. of the United States. It'll be interesting to see what he has to say, if he'll talk about politics or if he will encourage the um, graduates to go and, and to pursue a life and to make a difference in this world. It'll one be, thing's for sure, well, it'll be something we haven't heard before, maybe. <laughs> oh, it'll be interesting, and it'll be parsed about by everybody and, and broken of course, up as of course. all of his words are. are. But then it's interesting that his, his first commencement address would be at, at a, an evangelical college. So, Richmond, Virginia, or L.A.? L.A. Okay, let's see if we can find that story in here. There's so many papers. Ah, here it is. Last April, Kobe Bryant, one of the greatest athletes of all time, ended his 20-year basketball career with a bang. He scored 60 points in his final game. Well, of course, Kobe was raised in a Catholic household. He even spent some time in his youth in Italy. He and his wife, Vanessa, got married in the Catholic Church, and then he had that big mistake that he made in 2003. Yes. Um, he was in Colorado for knee surgery, admitted having sex with a woman who was not his wife. He was charged with rape, but eventually the charges were dropped, civil lawsuit filed. And he said what really helped him, though, through that process was his faith. He was talking to a priest, and he, the priest looks at him and says, did you do it? And Kobe said, of course not. And he goes, do you have a good lawyer? And uh -huh. Kobe goes, uh, yeah, he's phenomenal. So the priest said, then let it go, move on. Mm -hmm. God's not going to give you anything you can't handle, and it's in his hands now. It's something you can't control, so let it go. And Kobe says that was really the turning point. Now he and his wife, Vanessa, who are still together, mm -hmm. God bless her for her forgiveness, have created a foundation, and one of the things that they do in their foundation is really help the homeless. Wow, that is so good. I mean, I didn't know that uh, he was Catholic, and I didn't know it was his faith that kept them together because I'm sure that played a major part on her on her behalf as well and like you say God bless her for forgiving him and you know what it's good that they were able to work it out and stay together and much stronger today and they are helping um, helping so many people. people he said that you know fame and fortune is nothing compared to the importance of faith and family and he wants to be able to share that with others and his uh, help of the homeless community apparently is is well known throughout the Los Angeles area. It is. So just a couple of things, and we'll have all the stories for you on our Facebook page. Make sure you hit us up on the Book of Faces, the Twitter machine, and also at live at lacy.com. The Friday edition of Harvest rolls on after this.
Got Facebook? Follow The Harvest Show. Comment and share your opinions on current events. See new after the show guest interviews. Watch my updates and inspiration from Israel exclusively for Facebook. Facebook.com slash The Harvest Show. Like us today. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed to thy word. The C Broadcasting is dedicated to getting thousands of free Bibles into the hands of young people around the world this year. Will you help? Call 1-800-365-3732 today. So I have a question for you. How does a person bounce back after being beaten down personally, professionally, and emotionally? What impact do our words, thoughts, and beliefs have on our level of happiness? Former co-host of the 700 Club, Christy Watts, says there are pitfalls that keep us from experiencing real joy. But she says we can really talk ourselves happy. Welcome to The Harvest Show, Christy. Thank you so much, Valerie. Wonderful to be here. Thank you. Okay, so Christy, if I say something positive 10 times, does that mean I'll be happy or is there yeah. something deeper to this message? Much, much deeper. I know the title can be off-putting, but really talking yourself happy is just encouraging yourself with the word of God. And that's the key. It's got to be the word of God, but not just the word of God, but the word who is God and the word that we have got to get it deep down into the depth of our heart so that as we speak it, we can hold on to the promises of God. As I said, you're the former co-host of the 700 Club, and I remember watching you many times, and your joy was just infectious. I mean, I would, I would just catch, I would want to be happy just by watching you, but you say that you have a backstory where things all fell apart for you, so you have the credibility to talk about this message. Sure, and a lot of us, you know, do have happy dispositions or joyful or the, or the disposition where the glass is um, half full rather than half empty. And that's just naturally in me. However, what people don't understand, even when they saw me on the 700 Club, was the rough road that I went through. You see, we all have a story, every single one of us, and I'm no different. Um, not only was I divorced, but dealing with job loss, no money. Uh, my friends abandoned me. The church rejected me. You name the situation, I went through it. And um, it was really hard. And that natural joy or happiness or optimism was gone. And how I even got the title was, it was about two years where I had no money, no job, no friends. Um, you name it, it happened. And I was just crying out to God saying, but Lord, you said to trust me, but what in the world is going on? And Lord, you said to have faith in you, but my, my faith is faltering and I'm becoming hope depleted. And where the title came from was I couldn't stop crying for about five days straight. And I was on the phone talking with my mom who was trying to encourage me. Um, and I'd prayed and fasted and everything else. And one day she started talking about a situation my sister was going through. And I put my own problems aside, start focusing on my sister. And I said, wait, mom, remember when God did this? And remember when God did that? Tell her, tell her these stories about what God had done in the past. And the more I started to remind myself, my mother and my mother of this, of what God had done before those personal experiences where I knew God had spoken and moved on my behalf, that spirit of oppression and depression started to lift up. And before I knew it, I said, girl, I just talked myself happy. <laughs> and my mom said, girl, I just talked myself happy too. Hence the title. Okay, that means we have to know the promises of God, the Word of God, in order to, to speak the Word of God in our own lives. Isn't that correct? You, you hit the nail on the head, and that's the whole thing. I mean, a lot of times we talk about the goodness of God, but do we really know why God is good? You know, a lot of times we talk, we can quote Scripture up, down, and around the block and say God is faithful, but do we really know why God is faithful? And that Faithfulness means that God is true and dependable and that if he said it, he's going to do it, that we can rely on him. And the reason why I can now say that is because, look, I sat on the host uh, on the set of the 700 Club and I was the queen of quoting scriptures and, and saying how good God is. Well, the bottom line is God was very good because I had a good position and I was mm -hmm. making money and life was very good. But when life started to hit me and my knees were, you know, shot out from under me and I was laying on the floor crying and singing old Negro hymns like nobody knows the trouble I done seen, <laughs> you know, I had to really learn, you know, who God is and what the faithfulness of God is and what the faithful faithfulness of God really looks like. And that happened when I held on to the word of God, as in the person of God, the power of God. 
and of course, our Abba Father, the Papa, as in the love of God. Okay, so you cover some other really important themes in your project, um, compassion, obedience, forgiveness. Now, forgiveness, that's a really big one, isn't it? Yeah, and you know what? I'm so glad you, you hit that because there are basic biblical principles that lead us to that place of joy. You know, the Bible says that whosoever trusts in the Lord, happy is he. So to your point earlier, how can you trust in someone that you don't know? So you've got to know the word. You've got to know God to trust him. The other scripture is in his presence is fullness of joy. Well, the key is being in the presence of God. And the reason why we have joy in the presence of God is because God gives us so much in his presence, like teaching us how to walk in compassion and forgiveness and trust and identity and hope. And for me, one of those biblical principles was learning how to walk in forgiveness. Because not for nothing, it is really easy for people to offend us all day, every day. And as Christians, we say, oh, I forgive them. But in our heart, we want to, you know, knock them down and, and slap them. We do. And so I was the exact same way. And um, it wasn't until I got to the point where I, I, I was offended to the core and wounded to the core by some people I trusted. One um, was my ex-husband who walked out on us 11 years before. And in fact, the story is I had my son on a Thursday, came home from the hospital Saturday and Sunday, my ex-husband left us, walked out and said, I never loved you. Wow. And uh, took all of our money and was gone. So for years, I would say, I forgive him, I forgive him, because he wasn't an active part in our life, financially, emotionally, physically. But the truth of the matter is in my heart, I still held, held resentment toward him. And it wasn't until the Lord taught me that I was incapable of forgiving but the power of the Holy Spirit in me that God could forgive him through me. And that was when I learned a phenomenal biblical principle where, you know, when Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit says that he's our helper, he can help us to forgive and help us to trust and help us to find that joy regardless of our circumstances. Okay, so for Christy, for the person who's watching today saying, wow, I mean, my husband did that to me or I have an illness and I'm angry with God. How can they begin to do what you're talking about and applying the principles that you talk about and talk yourself happy? Well, you know, a lot of it is not head knowledge, it's heart knowledge. And, you know, the whole essence of the word talk and happy, it's not so much even about the word happy as it is talk, understanding and recognizing the power of the words that we speak. But scripture says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So you can quote scripture all day, every day, but mm -hmm. if you don't allow the word of God to transform your heart, nothing's going to change. So for that person who's saying, Lord, I'll be happy when you heal me. Lord, I'll be happy when you give me a job. Lord, I'll be happy when you send me that husband or get rid of that husband or whatever the situation <laughs> is. The truth of the matter is the Lord says, you know, when we call on him, when we seek him, then we will lack nothing. And it's by knowing the word of God that we can have hope and joy and peace in God, in the presence of God, regardless of our circumstances. So specifically to answer your question, how can people uh, get to know God and have that joy and hope and peace regardless of the circumstances is really getting to know God in the heart, not in the mind, not just in our words, but in our heart, because there has to be an alliance with the, what, while, ha while having the mind of Christ, the heart of God, by speaking and coming into agreement with the word of God. Wow, thanks so much, Christy, for sharing your insights with us. And uh, thanks for joining us here on Harvest. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And tell everybody, Valerie, to get the book. Here I am. I'm holding it up. I'm about to tell them right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, to connect with Christy, go to talkyourselfhappybook.com. And, you know, to get a, a copy of the book, you can go to the harvest harvest-tv.com for a link to our project or go to talkyourselfhappybook.com. Harvest continues in just a moment. Here in Malawi in this area, there are no deep wells. These are shallow wells dug in the bottom of a dried out riverbed where they wait for water to rise up through the rocks below. Memory here, she's got about five gallons, 40 pounds of water that she'll carry on her head back to her home just to have uh, for her and her family. There's an opportunity for you to help sponsor a well so that in places like this, they have a deep water well nearby so they can have healthy water for a healthy life. Do you long to visit the Holy Land but don't want to travel alone? 
on a Lassie tour to Israel, you're not alone. Our team of professionals has more than 50 years experience bringing Christians together in the fascinating land of the Bible. You and your new friends will worship together as you sail the Sea of Galilee, break bread in the Garden Tomb, and get baptized in the Jordan River, just like Jesus and the disciples did more than 2,000 years ago. What better way to experience the sights and sounds of ancient Jerusalem than with other believers from around the world? To join us for a life-changing trip to Israel, November 8th through 17th, 2017, go online to lasseetours.com or call 1-800-685-3732. Tell the operator to send you a free information packet today. But seats are limited, so don't wait. Call now. Just one visit to the Holy Land and your faith will never be the same. Time now to hear from our LaCie correspondent, Brian Bush, who joins us from Jerusalem with an update on what's going on in the Middle East. And Brian, I'd like to know more about this airlift that the United States used this week in Raqqa in Iraq in the fight against Islamic State. Well, Chuck, it appears to be a very concentrated attack on a base where foreign fighters of Islamic State are at a major dam called Tupka. Uh, this is significant because it could be interpreted that the U.S. coalition wants to get at these fighters before they could sabotage the dam and disperse back to their home countries after the collapse of Islamic State in its current form. Chuck? You say current form. Do you think we will not see the end of Islamic State? Well, as much as we all would like to see Islamic State obliterated, uh, many feel that when the so-called caliphate that they have created in Iraq and Syria is gone, it will only bring such uh, terrible, isolated uh, forms of lone wolf terror attacks as what we've seen just happen in London. And uh, those are the result of d deranged, ideologically driven uh, uh, young people who hear a message of extreme jihadism. And as long as Islam itself, particularly the Sunnis, don't go after radical clerics and their message of martyrdom, we will continue to see troubled people carry out such horrible acts. Chuck? And as we're talking about Islamic State's defeat, there was a gathering here in America hosting 68 countries who were in the coalition fight what has been the view of the meeting from there in the Middle East? Well, you know, people over here are kind of ho-hum because meetings like this are, uh, on the surface, um, they're all about demonstrating a united front uh, uh, to fight Islamic extremism. Uh, so they are about the work of uh, countering the global threat for identifying and implementing a holistic strategy that fights terrorism, both militarily and ideologically. But really, it's all about um, successful partnership building beyond the fight against Islamic State. We're talking about growth for economic cooperation, coordination uh, to resolve regional challenges in order uh, to avoid such uprisings again. These are the things that people are commenting over here about that meeting. But it has to be noted uh, it's been said over here, you know, that, that the two most effective countries who are fighting Islamic State on the ground in the trenches weren't even there. And that is Iran and Russia. Chuck? All right. Well, let's finish this week by talking a little bit about something we've talked a lot about this week, and that is the Church of the Holy Sepulcher because the unprecedented renovation works there. Yes, it's the traditional place of Christ's death and resurrection, but what is it that really makes this site so very significant? Well, I think it's because the church itself is a singular point, an intersection where humanity can come and understand the reality that God does really exist. Um, we read about the death and resurrection of Jesus throughout our lives. We learn about it in Sunday school and in sermons and teachings all of our life. But when one 
comes and encounters a place where pilgrims have been pounding the pavement for 1,700 years, acknowledging what Jesus Christ did for them, for all of humanity, in redeeming it by his life and giving of his life as a sacrifice for our sins. It's a powerful, life-changing event. And all this is concentrated in that one spot. That is why the Holy Sepulchre is referred to as the par excellence holy place in the world. Chuck? All right. Thank you, Brian. A reminder, Brian gives us exclusive content from Israel that's only available on the Harvest Show Facebook page. So make sure you like us on Facebook. The International Prayer Line is available to you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If you need prayer, give us a call, 1-800-365-3732. You can send it through email at prayer at lacy.com, worldharvest.com. And the mailing address is 61300 Ironwood Road, South Bend, Indiana, 466. One, four, and joining us on set is Pastor Charles. Pastor Charles, I'd imagine that you get prayer requests about domestic violence as well. Oh boy, we got all kinds of things going on in the home, Valerie. Um, uh, things that are brought into the home uh, from the outside, and then also things that develop inside the home and then, you know, work their way out. Okay. So we got all kinds of things. We got, as a matter of fact, we got a few things that we could make mention of today, mm -hmm. if you like. Uh, for instance, we got Reba. Reba up in New York. Reba says that we need prayer in our family. I have twin daughters, and they cannot get along and are brutal to each other. She says that pray that the fighting stops before one of them gets hurt. Wow. Yeah. And then we got Leanne here in our own state in Indiana. Leanne says, please keep my marriage in prayer. My husband is an abusive, is abusive and looking at other women. I can't say anything for fear that I might be hurt. Well, there you go. There's yeah. part of what we're talking about right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we got Daniel in Pennsylvania. Daniel says, I was shot a month ago, and my family is afraid to have me around the house because the shooting was gang-related. Mm. He says, I'm not afraid, but the family is. You know, so <laughs> he doesn't even see what this does to the family. The violence. By, yeah, by yes. uh, bringing this to the home. Interesting yeah. that he would call us, though. You don't yeah. think of he, gang members necessarily <laughs> as being people of well, faith. Well, you know, we and, and as, as uh, operators talk to him, Chuck, on the phone, they begin to see that he was prompted to call a prayer line. Mm -hmm. You know, so he was searching. Of course, he's sitting at home now wounded, you know, from being well. shot. But at the same time, though, he's obviously watching Christian television. Would you take about 30 seconds and pray because I know people are sure. calling in, feeling desperate with nowhere to turn. Sure. Father in heaven, we just thank you today, Lord God, because those ones who are calling in, Father, they know that they can call prayer line because we will touch and we will agree in prayer that God will move on their behalf. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. So whether it's domestic violence or you have an illness and you need prayer, give us a call. We're always here ready to pray for you. That number is 1-800-365-3732. We've had an amazing time here on The Harvest Show. Thanks to you, and we'll see you next time. We know you're working daily to make healthy choices for your life and the life of your loved ones. MHC Life is here to help you with those choices by offering supplements and materials that maximize your personal health and total well-being. This month, build and maintain a healthy immune system with our Super Immune Pack. Order today and get 37% off plus free shipping. Visit MHCLife.com or call 1-800-965-2345. Enhance your total health today, mind, body, and spirit with MHC Life. The Harvest Show is produced by LaCie Broadcasting and is viewer supported by people just like you. Thank you for inviting us into your home today.